Okay. Did I get it all? All right, take a moment just to check your feet. Make sure your feet are pointed straight ahead and hip bone distance apart, right underneath your hip bones. And then just feel where are your hands hanging in space today? In an ideal world, your collarbone lays fairly flat against your body and your shoulder blades in the back are about two and a half to three inches away from your spine and straight up and down. And what I look for when I'm looking at shoulder position is if there's extra rotation out or in or rotation forward, like if a pec is tight and the shoulder hinges forward like this, then that changes how the scapula sits on your back and isn't straight up and down. And often we can see a collarbone then start to stick out in the front. So all of those shifts and changes uh, are how we're looking at shoulder blade position. And then we also want to look at how the arm bone is hanging in the socket. And that tells us if we have good activation of rotator cuff or tricep, all of that stuff. So feet pointed straight ahead. Go ahead and start with your shoulder shrugs today. Squeeze them together just a little bit. Slide them up toward your ears and press them down. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Working a little bit into that thoracic extension, feeling it move through your whole system. And then take it into a shoulder squeeze, just squeezing it onto your back 10 times. Squeeze and release. Squeeze release. Retracting the shoulder blade all the way and then letting it come off your back. Retract, release. Squeeze, release. Find the muscles in between the shoulder blade and the spine let them hug in. Good. Now bring your arms out to the side and pretending like you're pressing out. Shoulder blades coming off your back away from your spine and, and then hug them back in. Press them all the way out. Shoulder blades all the way off your back. Squeeze them in. Press in. You can take your hands forward. Press in. Start to work these side muscles, that serratus where that begins to kick in, forward, back, forward, back. So we do a lot of stuff in Nagoshku where we're retracting the shoulder blades because we want that upper back activation. I can help you. Can you bring it down here? You might have to tell Merrick to switch the mind to a different one. Merit. Good. And then into a windmill, arms out to the side, go into that lateral flexion, over to one side and up, over to the other side. Keep going. I'm going to try and help him out here a second. over and up. Feeling your shoulder blades have that gentle press away from you so you get as big as possible and then letting the shoulder blade move over the rib cage. And then step your feet wider. So sometimes a shoulder can be tight because you have an elevated hip. Sometimes a shoulder could be tight or locked down because of some scoliosis. Keep going. One, two, 
wider one more time. Pretty far out, hug your feet in towards each other. Feel your inner thighs. Feel like as if you had a grid around your entire leg. How do you have that hug to the bone in, in every way so that it supports the structure through the whole system? Over and up and over and up. And back in. Last five. And release right into a standing arm circle. Hold your fingers into the golfer's grip. Feet pointed straight ahead. Pinch your shoulder blades together a little bit and then bring those arms all the way out. Squeeze the shoulder blades on your back. Feel both arm bone into shoulder blade, shoulder blade towards the spine. Soft belly. Relax your stomach. Circle your arms forward. 40 circles. Backwards. Palms up. Hug in. Circle back. And release. Nice. All right, come on to your hands and knees. Uh, let's do a little bit of wrist rotations first. Just get your wrists ready to come down there. Maybe spread your fingers really wide. And then hands and knees. So I want you to play today with first your shoulders and then we're gonna move into the low back and kind of connect them all together. So go ahead and squeeze your shoulders onto your back. Feel what happens as your upper back moves down toward the floor and your shoulder blades pinch on your back and then press your shoulder blades apart. So we're playing with retraction and protraction. The protraction happens when this serratus kicks in over here, this side muscle. So low back fairly still right now and then just drop into that retraction and then press up fully protract all the way and you may feel your abdominals start to kick in as your back starts to round a little bit. That's fine. Down and press. Down and press. And then bring your shoulders to neutral and play with that in your low back. So you can arch your back, letting your belly hang toward the floor. That opens and lengthens the abdominals. And then you can round your back. And as you round your back, your glutes and your belly can kick in. As you open that, let your tailbone lift, belly get long and low belly up, tailbone pointing down, find your glutes. So just a little pelvic tilt right there. And then hold that low belly up and in. Feel your abdominals like you zipped your pants up between your pubic bone and your belly button. Hold that zip and then take one leg back behind you. And release that leg. Take the other leg back behind you. And release, or first feel it, low belly engaged and then release the leg. One more time. Lift, keeping that low belly active. Coming down. Lift. 
and lower. One more each side, low belly stays. So that means if you can't let your leg come way up because your low belly drops, keep that leg low. Focus on the belly for a second and release. Last one. But go ahead and sit back or just get off your wrists for a moment and do a few more wrist rolls. We're going to do one more to engage those same places on your hands and knees. So come onto your hands and knees again. And this time, right hand to left knee. And you're going to press your knee into your hand while you pull and scoop that low belly up and in. So find your low belly again. And then press knee into hand. So we're getting serratus on the right arm because it's coming down. That shoulder blade's coming across. Low belly and a little bit of hip flexor and then release. Switch sides, find your balance, press the knee into your hand, find your low belly, find your hip flexor, and find this side muscle right here as well. And resist it, hold, and breathe. Switch. In, release. Press, release, and from your hands and knees into cats and dogs, and really emphasize that low belly area all the way up, engage up towards the ribs, and then ribs open, pubic bone moves away from your sternum, tailbone lifts, shoulder blades squeeze together, bring your head up all the way into rounding. Shoulder blades way off your back, all the way into that protracted position. Find that serratus, hold it there. Breathe, coming down, head up, and under. And then come onto your back. Feet on the floor, knees bent, just coming down. I'm gonna bring the screen down just a bit. We'll go back into shoulders, right into the rotator cuff. So bring your arms straight out from your shoulders on the floor and just roll your arm in the shoulder socket. So feeling your feet even on the floor, check your pelvic alignment with your rib cage alignment, and then just roll the arm on the floor, feeling the arm bone separate from the shoulder socket a little bit. So independent movement there between arm bone and shoulder blade. Feel that, make sure it's happening. Often when things get tight, we start to get arm bone and shoulder blade move together. And that can be like neuromotor that needs to be separated, which can be separated pretty quickly, or just retraining that action or putting it, the shoulder blade in a better position to change what's going on. Good. Then arm bones, elbows bent at your side going straight up. This time, allow the shoulder blade to come with you out to the side, reaching all the way up, all the way, lift up way by your ears. Let that whole part lift as far as it will go, even one side and then the other reach. And then bring the, bend the elbows first and then bring the shoulders down away from your ears. So those are different movements. Once again, reaching the arms up over your head, then allow the shoulder blade as the arm goes up to come out toward your armpit, off your back, sliding up toward your ears. Go ahead and like reach each arm, let it go all the way up, sliding off your back. And then elbows bend, shoulder blades move away from your ears. Good, let's do a few more of those. 
arms all the way up. Feel the shoulder blades wrap as that serratus kicks in. Then reach one arm and the other, I'm even helping mine a little bit. Lift all the way, let it slide all the way. Make, make it be no space between your shoulders and your ears. And then bend the elbows and then bring your shoulders down away from your ears. One more, all the way up. Shoulder blades come off your back. Feel them wrap around toward the armpit. All the way up. Toward the ears, elbows bend, shoulder blades come down and away. Then elbows out by your sides. Rotate your arms back in a goal post. Go back into that rotator cuff a little bit. External rotation in the arm bone, straight out from the shoulder. Just freeing up that one more time. And then elbows right by your sides, still going into that external rotation in the arm bone, letting your arms come all the way down to the floor, feeling what that does to the shoulder blade. Maybe it moves in toward your spine just a little bit. And then back up. Elbows stay in by your sides, rotating your arms down. Movement of arm bone into shoulder socket. and then reach your arms all the way up over your head. If you can get it to the floor easily, then press your hands into the floor and let your upper back open one more time. Come on up, arms out to the side, into a hip crossover stretch. Crossing the left ankle over your right knee, coming all the way down to your right side on the floor. Look left, press the left knee away from you, opening up your hip. Hold it and breathe. done all that work to get our shoulder blades in a better position. We've started to work into the extension of the spine. And now we're going to work on any hip disparity that we might have. If you have one hip anterior or posterior, if you have one femur that goes more medial or more external, any of those things can be worked on by the tip crossover stretch. Take a big deep breath in your belly. Bring the air in, expanding in that east to west direction. Be conscious and present with your breath. Come on up. Switch sides, crossing the right ankle over the left knee, bringing it all the way down to the side. Look to your right, press your right knee away from you, and just notice the difference between the two sides. Find that breath again, full deep breath.
and come on up. Excellent. Both feet on the floor. Rock your feet all the way up onto your toes. Feel the whole bottom of the foot squeeze like you're trying to curl the foot in on each other. So right and left side comes together, letting the arch move up into the space in the bottom of your foot, and then come back, lift your toes, spread your toes, and then take it forward again, all the way up. Maybe you get a cramp across the front wall of the foot where the ball of the foot, right? Where your toes and foot meet. Maybe it's in the more of the middle of your foot. See if you can access all of those intrinsic foot muscles right now. And then even into the calf up here, feel those and then move back, letting all of those flexors, plantar flexors and dorsiflexors slide around your ankle. All the way up, feel it again. Toes curling, arches curling. Find those muscles when it when you're not standing on them, the foot's not loaded, they can really hug up into that arch and then pull back, lift, spread. Get those bones to actually move all the way up, squeeze. And back, open. Squeeze. Come back. And then into a hip lift, right ankle crossing over your left leg, pull the leg up, press your right knee away from you, pull your left leg in and hold. This is gonna work up this whole side, left side of your body. As the hip flexor engages, your back muscles should let go. So if you feel it in your back, go ahead and pull it up a little more and see if you can get it out of your back. Completely relax your shoulders. Relax your neck, but do let that left hip engage and press that right hip away from you. Push, pull, and hold. This right femur externally rotating. Find your breath. Got about 15 more seconds. Pull both ankles back toward your knees. That will help the rotation go into the hip and not in the knee. And release. Switch sides. Cross the left ankle over the right knee. Pull it up. Feel the difference between the two sides. Just notice how balanced you are. Shoulders relaxed. Head and neck relaxed. Both feet flexy. Hold and breathe. and release. Grab your block, place it between your knees. Squeeze in, find your adductors. Hug to the midline, everything else is relaxing on the floor. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Notice if things want to help you in your shoulders or in your neck. Just allow the action to be right in those inner thighs. As the adductor engages, it should pull the femur to more of a neutral position in your pelvis. As that neutral position happens in your pelvis, that will translate all the way up to this gentle thoracic extension we have in your upper back. If you want a little bit more, you can take your hands behind your head. That will just change the angle of the shoulder blade and 
the relationship how to your arm from your arms into your upper back. Give me 10 more squeezes, squeeze and release. Grab your strap. Place your strap around your legs. Put that around your knees and then grab your block and place it at your ankles. Make your strap fist width apart. Ribs in line with your pelvis. And then press out with your strap. Squeeze in with the feet at the at the block and then release so you're doing shins in thighs out at the same time and then release shins in thighs out release shins in thighs out release shins in thighs out release Shins in, thighs out, release. Keep going. Go ahead and release that. Set your block and strap to the side. Stay down on your back. Okay, now you're gonna abduct your legs. So you're gonna let your legs slide on the floor. Take it all the way out as far as it will go. Your whole spine stays stable. That other leg stays stable. Imagine you're kind of pouring sand into that side of your body so that you're abducting your hip as far as it will go, feel that, and then slide it back in. Stay with one leg, do that 10 times. Let the leg slide all the way out as far as it will go on the floor. Hold it there for a moment, and then bring it back in. So everything else completely held stable by the floor. You're working in this plane of motion. Find that abductor. See if you can take it a little higher. Bring it in, out, I think that's three, set 10, keep going. Excellent, stay with the same leg. Now bring it up, hip flexion, drop the knee out to the side, let it go down, bring it around. Flex, abduct with the knee bent, that changes some of those muscles, down and around. Flexion, abduction, down and around. Is 
then go the other way, stay out, bring that knee up towards your elbow, bring it in towards your chest, press it out. Out, lift, in, down. You can feel your core working just to keep you stable. Awesome. Switch legs. Just taking that leg straight out to the side 10 times, all the way out, get it as far as you can go, and then try to get it one more inch and then slide it back in. Out. Find this abductor out here. Glutes, TFL adductors of the hip. Notice where you want to compensate and see if you can let that go. Out and in. A few more to get to 10. Out a little more. Slide it back in. I think that's eight. Slide it back in. Nine. Ten. Good. Hip flexion. Pull the knee into your chest. Let the knee rotate out to the side. Push it all the way down and away from you. Bring it back to knee pointed straight up to the ceiling. Pull it all the way in. Let the hip drop wide. Let the leg go out and away from you. In, up, out, down. You may have clicks and pops in your hip. That's normal, it's not optimal. As the tendons move over those bones. I'm getting a click in my, the back. Uh-huh. So maybe add a little more abdominal control and see if you can stop that. Okay, thanks. Okay, last one, out to the side, up and around. Out, sorry, down, out, abduct, knee toward elbow, then knee to the ceiling, press it back out. Let the foot rotate out, knee to the elbow, up and around. Lydia, did that stop it? No. Okay. And it's harder to pull it in. Okay. The difference between the two sides is pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, cats and dogs, nice work. Integrate that movement. So now stabilize the leg bones and the arm bones. Let the spine roll the hips over the top of the femurs, the shoulders in the shoulder socket. And then have a seat. Feel both sit bones on the ground, hands behind you. Shoulder blades can squeeze towards each other a little bit. Thighs tight. Femur rotation out and in, all the way out and all the way in. continuing to walk my hands towards each other as my upper back is opening. I 
and then take your feet wider. Same thing, out and in. And then wider one more time. And then bring them in, come into a sitting floor twist. Cross your right leg over your left. Sit really tall, hand behind you, cross it over any way you can pull this way or cross it over this way. Feel both sit bones really into the floor. And then when you have good access to your hip flexors, then your spine will be able to rotate well. So first find your hips, and then go ahead and allow your spine to twist. Hold and breathe. Flex your foot back, tighten your thigh that's on the ground. Shoulder blade gently pulling down and back. See if you can wring your body out with a couple more breaths. Deep breath in, fill your abdominal cavity. Exhale, squeeze. One more. Deep breath in and out. And untwist. Switching sides. Find your hips, sit tall, cross that arm over, and twist. Find those hips, engage your hip flexors, feel your butt on the ground, and then allow your spine to open. Untwist and then both legs out straight. Pull your toes back, tighten your thighs. See if you can get to tighten all the way around your knee so that your quads are working around the knee and even up toward the hip. If you can get all of the quads engaged enough, all four muscles of the upper thigh to push your knees toward extension while your hips in flexion. And I will say if you had active sciatic pain, this would not be an exercise for you. So if this causes nerve pain, please skip it. Otherwise, this is a demanding exercise for the position of your low back all the way up into your upper back. So sit as tall as you can, and then hands at your temples, elbows, hands in the golfer's grip, fingers curled into your palms, bring your elbows all the way together so they touch. Sit really, really tall. Find your hip flexors, find your quads, and bring your arms all the way back. Let your body react to that thoracic extension that happens, then a little thoracic flexion as you come into that rounded position, shoulder blades come off your back, find that side body, and open it back up again. Elbows in, elbows open.
Keep those thighs tight. Keep your butt cheeks on the ground. Feel that root to rise from your sit bones all the way up through your shoulders. Five more. And release. Release your legs, release your feet. Come on to your hands and knees. Um, grab your chair, get it ready for you so that you can do that assisted runner stretch. First, we're gonna do a downward facing dog pose. So hands on the ground, fingers spread, knees slightly behind your hips, tuck your toes under and integrate what we just did into your downward facing dog pose. You can pedal it out, one heel down and then the other. Knees bent if you're prioritizing your spine. And just hold that and breathe. You decide if your knees are bent or you're going for legs straight depending on what's happening up in your back. If it's really round right here, please bend your knees and try to lift your sit bones and Go for more of a straight back. If it's pretty extended, then go ahead and go into knee extension. Find your breath. And then come on down. Put your hands on your chair. Place your left foot in front of your right knee like you're standing on a balance beam. Tuck your toes under and work your legs towards straight. Square your hips the best you can and then put an arch into your back. Rolling the pelvis over the top of the leg bone. And breathe. down, switch sides, tuck your toes under, press it up, square your hips again best you can, and then roll your pelvis over the top of that leg bone, and breathe. Thigh tight. Keep rolling it over. You should feel it in the hamstring, but be careful about it being up at the attachment. I'd like it to be more in the belly of that muscle as it moves. This aligns the leg bone, allows the hip to engage. You're in a, a bit of a unilateral hip position but bilateral pelvic demand. So both sides rolling forward. And release into your downward dog one more time. Tuck your toes under, press it up and back. Find your breath.
and then come down, foot circles, point flexes. Coming down onto your back one more time. Sending your left leg out on the floor, holding your right leg, pulling your shoulders down and back. Let's do the alphabet today instead of full foot circles. So uh, capital letters. Get some angles that we might not get. And then switch sides, shoulders down and back, bottom leg active, thigh tight on this side, you can pull your toes back a little bit. Release it out. Just feel your body on the floor for a moment. Go ahead and let your legs just roll out. Feel yourself kind of balance on your sacrum. Check your hip bones. Do they feel straight across and even? Shoulder blades underneath you. Yes, McCoy. You need what? Um, you need to go find it. It might be in my room. I need five more minutes. Why, why? Hey, McCoy, I'm teaching. Uh, but I don't. I, I need five. I don't know where the lights are. And I can't. And there's no one in the room. I need five minutes and I'll be right there. All right, come into whatever position that you'd like to end today. So on your back, legs up over your block into static back, into seated. And just take a few moments to show up right here, right now. You can close your eyes today. And begin to feel your breath move in and out of your body. Begin to drop back from the minutia of the day. What are the sensations that exist right here? How can you be here now? And can you drop back to experience yourself only as the witness to what's arising in the moment? So 
a witness to any thought that might arise, to any concept you might imagine. Those are part of the mind. Just notice them. Experience yourself as that unnameable vastness with which everything is arising. If you notice you've been taken into a thought, come back to right here, right now. See if you can follow three breaths and just witness them as they move through your body. And then begin to slowly move or open your eyes. If you'd like to drop in deeper, you may turn off your computer. Or you can check in.